Welcome back to Weave Along with Eloise. I'm Eloise of Finchingfield. I hadn't really planned on doing a two-parter of this laurel leaf thing, but here we are. When I was asked to do the laurel leaves garters for Gabriella, I was also asked to do a super secret project. Given that the time for this project to be done is approaching really rapidly, and I have a ton to do before I go on my first camping trip in two years, I opted to do a slightly simpler but still very stunning pattern. But you may ask yourself, why laurel leaves? This is the symbol that represents the order of the laurel. Shocker, I know. But the symbol dates back to Greek and Roman times. Laurel leaves were used to commemorate victory, accomplishment, and success. Military commanders would wear laurel leaves after a great battle. The ancient Pythian games were a series of athletic festivals and musical competitions, and they were held for Apollo, the god of music, poetry, and sports. The winners of these competitions were crowned with a laurel wreath. It was like winning a medal in the Olympics. And in fact, the International Olympic Committee just introduced a new award, the Olympic Laurel. This distinction is to honor those who have made significant contributions in culture, development, education, and peace through sport. In the ancient Roman religion, Victoria, who was the goddess of victory, imagine that, was often depicted crowning emperors and gods in laurel wreaths. On the coins of Octavius Augustus, all the way through Constantine the Great, the coins depicted the leaders wearing a laurel wreath on their heads. During the Renaissance era, great poets were crowned with a laurel wreath to signify them as princes among poets. As such, the laurel wreath has become a symbol of success and achievement, and it was adopted by the SEA to signify excellence through the arts and sciences. Just an aside, many people wonder what's the difference between an art and a science, because there's really a fine line between the two. I mean, cooking can be an art, but it can also be a science. It's an art to make food look and taste good, but it's the science that gets it there because you're adding heat and you're mixing chemicals. What do you think? But now I must get started on this project. I need to get it finished because we're going to be doing this Italian Renaissance laureling and vigil. Um, I really have to have an Italian outfit. So I need to make a camicia and I need to make the gamura and I need to make some veils and I need to uh, get my tent ready and make sure it's not musty. I got it. Yeah, I got a lot of stuff to do. Okay, so you need 14 cards. You'll need two colors. I'm going to do silk again because it's amazing. And uh, grab your loom and let's get started. All right, I've got my pattern. I've got my 14 cards and I've got my silk threads and my little tiny scissors. And again, I've placed a, a thread so I know what path to follow in order to get the yardage that I need. Now, the, the last one that I did, which I will put a picture of it here, I ended up being about two inches short. Really frustrating to do all that calculation, adding that 20 to 25 percent, and then still ending up being short. That's the way it goes sometimes. So I'm making this a little bit longer, hoping that the numbers will actually work out this time. Okay, so I'm going to be warping up using these two colors and using this pattern, which I will put right here so you can kind of get a good look at it. It is not a two-sided pattern, and Again, it's not twist neutral. There's two cards that in the middle that continually move forward and then the two cards on the outside will continually move forward. The rest of them are twist neutral. So if you want to use swivels for the cards number five and ten, you can go ahead and hook those up as you're warping it. So very quickly I'm going to go ahead and start warping this. Um, you know, you've seen me do this a lot of times before going around following the path, sharp scissors, and this is a fairly easy pattern. So if you are a new tablet weaver, this is a pretty easy pattern. Like I said, it's mostly twist neutral, except for those two cards in the middle. Um, you can uh, deal with that in a couple of different ways, either by stopping and untying, chasing the twist out of it, and retying. Or you can get a couple of fishing swivels. Uh, you can get those at any fishing or hardware store, and they're pretty inexpensive. They work really well. Um, you could tie them on uh, before you start. Uh, someone had given me a suggestion on a better knot to use for the fishing swivels, and I will have to go look that up. Um, editing Eloise, go ahead and, you know, 
put the right kind of knot for that because I don't remember. Oh, by the way, this is a, I want to say that this is Guntram's card weaving thingy. And literally it's called the Guntram's card weaving thingy. I'm not making it up. The way that this reads is a little different. So I translated it into the TDD software so that if you're unfamiliar with the other one, now you have that Rosetta Stone so you can translate back and forth. Essentially Z is Z. A, B, C, D is correct, but their chart is kind of upside down. Okay, so for card number one, it's Z-threaded, so we're going to go through the front of the card as the card is facing me, and all four threads are yellow, so that's easy enough. Oh, good. I don't know if you can hear it. My son just started his... Um, nebulizer machine downstairs, so you might hear a little rumble, 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 rumble from downstairs. So, let's see. Um, don't want to overshare, but uh, I have two children with cystic fibrosis. And uh, my son, the um, going to be, hopefully, an Eagle Scout soon, is one of them. Uh, he's actually been pretty healthy. All of my kids have been pretty healthy. My other CF kid is even more healthy. Ridiculous. Um, modern medicine, what can I say? Okay, so card number two is one green and three yellows. So again, I'm going to leave a, a nice long tail right at the beginning. I'm going to thread the green and yellow at the same time. And then I'll come back with the two yellows. What else? Uh, husband's doing well, responding well to treatment, so that's all good news. Uh, middle kid is enjoying college and uh, decided she wants to go back next year, so that's a good thing. And she'll be home in about four weeks. Yeah. I'm looking forward to having her home again. Okay, card number two. Cards even aren't even numbered. I love these cards. I love the colored sides on them. It just it works really well for my my brain. Okay, also Z threaded. Uh, A is green and the rest are yellow. We had uh, let's see. Today is April twelfth, and we've had. All the weather today we've had warm and we've had cold and we've had hail and we've had snow and sun and it's yeah we've it's April so we're getting all of it today right now the, the skies are clear it's night I usually film in the mornings but um, I had to go get new tires for the car today, so I uh, postponed this and I just said, you know what, I, I gotta do this. I gotta get this project started and I want to share it with you guys, but I, I just, I wanted to take the proper amount of time to actually film this. And it just seemed to be the wrong time every day. And this morning I didn't have time. I got up and had a cup of tea and then I had to leave. Okay, card number three, two yellows, two greens. Let's see, what else am I doing? Um, I'm working on, with a, a team of customers, I'm making clothes for uh, the Princess of the Summits. I mean, don't get too impressed. I'm the hems and buttons girl. 
Um, at least that's that's my joke is that I'm I'm on hems and buttons because that seems to be the thing that I end up doing all the time. But I love it. I really do. I don't mind being hems and buttons if it gives everybody else an opportunity to, you know, do what they need to do to get the project done. I'm happy to do hems and buttons. Uh, okay, card three A and B are green. kind of hard to see what I'm doing here. I'm experimenting with different camera angles. You can let me know if you have a favorite angle. Let's see if I can reproduce it. And when the weather gets nicer, I can go outside and there's more room I can spread out and better light and Maybe not if it's 108 degrees outside like it was last year. Oh no, wait, I guess it only got to 104. I'm not sure what that is in Celsius. I'd have to do math. Math always do the thing. Okay, card number four is three greens and one yellow. This tablet weaving piece is not a good candidate for uh, continuous warping. That won't work at all. Oh, what? Oh, cut. Oh, shredded. I work on my cutting skills. Let me get the kindergarten scissors out again. Okay. And three. Oh, so this is um, this is the Becca loom. So far, it's worked really well, except I think I um, stripped out the threading on the uh, tension bar. Um, I had to take the the washer out. There was a washer between the peg and this part, and um, well, it, it wasn't tensioning up; it was just spinning and spinning. So I ended up taking that out and then the threads caught so I think I think I may have stripped the threads a little bit may have to get that fixed okay card number oh my on four a B and C are green again Z threaded I don't know if I'm just too harsh on the tools or what, but uh, yeah, it just started slipping. And I had that happen on my other loom where I had stripped out the, the threading and my husband was able to fix it because, well, he's good at fixing stuff. Okay. Card number five. Card five. Same thing, but different positioning. Okay, so three greens and one yellow. Yeah, with the weird weather we've had this last week or so, I'm not sure if I'm going to have to plant everything in my garden again. I've already planted some things twice because I, I sowed the seeds indoors and everything seemed to be looking okay and then everything wilted and died. And I don't think it was too much water. I don't think it was too little water. But something went wrong and they all keeled over. Hashtag Black Thumb Gardener. Okay, Z 
A is yellow, and the rest are green. I like the idea of gardening, and I like growing herbs and stuff, and I've tried many times to grow food-like things, but just an appalling success rate. Anyway, what did I do here? Oh, there we go. Left over right twice. And right over left. Ooh. Number six, same thing. Get these lined up a little better. All right. Well, I will go ahead and speed up the film, and I'll meet you after card fourteen. started on the weaving part. Now, um, after I finished warping up, I went back and double checked my work and I found that I had made uh, two big errors. So I had to go back and fix those, but now I've got them fixed. All the cards are AD at the top. I double checked all my work, like you do, like I just mentioned. Oh, and I still have this white thread here. I'm going to snip that off. White thread was just my my lead so I knew where I was going. Okay, so I got my shuttle loaded up. Again, this is the uh, the sharp knife edge shuttle that I got. All right, so we're gonna feed the weft in there, kind of leave a nice long tail. I'm gonna turn all the cards forward. This is gonna be so much easier because there's much fewer cards on this one, like about half. Put the shuttle through, bring the tail back through, and tighten it up gently. Turn all the cards forward again. Make sure they're in frame so you can see what I'm doing. Shuttle back through. Pull the tail back through the other direction. Oops. Give it a little tug. Not too tight. Turn the cards again. Now we're at A, B at the top. Hopefully, this is going to work out. Hopefully I did this right. Should have. I triple checked my work. And turn the cards one last time. So you have A, B back at the top again. loop and leave a loop behind. You're going to tuck that tail out of the way because you're not going to need it anymore. So now that this is anchored and the threads are all lined up and the tension is right and everything's good, 
I'm going to go ahead and start weaving the pattern. I will go ahead and start weaving the pattern, which is four turns forward. Now I could have gone ahead and started with pick five since the first four turns are four cards forwards or all the cards forward. Um, but I think I'd just rather start at the beginning. This is going to be a very delicate pattern. Because this silk is just tiny. Now if you were using 60 over 2 silk, this would be <laughs> probably that wide. It would be super tiny. Okay, so for the next pick, pick number five, it's uh, one card forward, the next three cards back, number five will go forward, six, seven, eight, and nine will go back, number ten forward, eleven, twelve, thirteen go back. Like I said, cards five and ten will always go forward, as well as the border cards. With the border cards, you can flip them. You can't do that so much with the cards in the middle, or you'll end up with the angles funny. So, like I said, you can use um, fishing swivels, um, or you can uh, independently weight those off the back of your loom and uh, let those spin freely. I think no, I've got two more turns. And that is it. There's eight easy picks. And this is so delicate and pretty.